right there we go thunder tiger ssk last time we had a look at this well i got it running it took me about 40 minutes to get it running because well i was being a little bit daft i haven't actually uploaded that video as yet i put it together and when i was putting it together it was about 43 minutes into it when i finally realized what the problem was by the time this video goes up you would have seen that video and i'm sure you know all about it and i probably got quite a few comments telling me that i'm a cock i know i'm a cock all right i know you ain't going to tell me about it 43 minutes in i realized that the low end needle was closed it was screwed all the way in so every time i was putting i was thinking there's a block I'm trying to unblock it, I'm putting air in it, I'm putting brake cleaner in it, I'm taking the needle apart, the high speed needle, <laughs> trying to get the blockage out. I'm putting nitro in the, directly in the carb there, and it's running, but then obviously it's not getting any fuel, so it stops running, and I'm thinking, why ain't it getting any nitro? And then I, then I had the thought, let's see what the low end needle is set at. So I put a screwdriver on it and realised it was all the way closed. You tit. If I had a thought to check that, I could have had it running in about five minutes. But, you know, these things happen. No one's perfect, and least of all, me. So, anyway, the last video, it got running, and it runs absolutely beautifully. It's mint. I mean, Mr. T and B said... This is going to be the hardest restoration I've ever done. But so far, it's a lovely running engine. It runs beautifully. And if I wasn't a tit and I did things properly and I checked the needle settings before I did anything else, then I would have had it running in about five or ten minutes. But nevertheless, it runs perfectly. So we're going to have a look at these servos. They're not stuck. They do move yeah um, i haven't even opened up the receiver box yet so i don't know what we've got in there we've definitely got something in there because we've got an antenna so it'll be a 27 megs receiver of some description in there but i've got in a tin over here i have there we go I've got a fly sky 2.4 gigs receiver so i'll put that in there i guess i've got a transmitter to match I locate a battery. Oh, there's a battery. There's a battery. We'll stick a bat, bat tray on there somewhere. Don't know where we're about to put it. I think that's the posts where there's a little holder meant to be to put a bat tray. Because a bat tray won't fit in there. Anyway, we'll put one somewhere. Cable okay, tied to those posts or something. And we can determine whether the servos are going to work. Then we've got the little matter of the front diff appears to be jammed but we'll do one thing at a time servos first and then diff afterwards and then after that it should be a running truck and we can go and give it a test drive but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves yes let's not get too far ahead of ourselves what's all this grass everywhere i don't know Whoa, why is it there i don't know <laughs> bloody hell it's grass everywhere look now my daughter's made herself a little stables for her toy horses and she got some astroturf to put on the field that she made out of cardboard so i was in here cutting astroturf and that's why there's little bits of grass everywhere it's not real grass plastic grass poison grass plastic grass should not exist real grass yes because it breathes naturally plastic grass very bad all right let's have a look what do I need? Oh yeah, I forgot. We also mended the clutch in the last video. We mended the clutch, so hopefully now it should uh, it should work. Let me fire it up again. I'm just gonna put this throttle linkage back on because I forgot to put it on when I had the engine out and I don't want to take the engine out again to put it back on so I'm just going to 
take it off at this end put it back on at this end a little bit rusty but that's all right that's not a problem we can always mend rust wd-40 mends rust right happy days have i ever been happier no good that's the way to be so let's take off the top of the receiver box see what we've got in here replace it straight away with a fly sky and a battery i reckon it's probably the original receiver in here whatever it would have come with i don't know what it would have come with when it was new you see but it's probably the original one you never know <laughs> you never bloody know some people do change things and others don't oh it's had a repair is it had a repair i don't know what that is <laughs> a little bit of i think it's had a repair in the past someone's obviously broken it and uh and then they've mended it look it's had some sort of repair there but we don't care about that what is it it's a ace rc tr 202a narrow band 27 megs two channel am receiver oh, oh, oh. <coughs> Blimey. a little bit of foam in there very nice nice to see someone did care for it one day because the way that's been cut i would say that's not from the factory unless this particular factory is not particularly uh good but anyway a bit of foam someone's put in there very handy that's the back tray. No, it's not. That's the switch. Oh, yeah, the switch. That reminds me. The switch is stuck, isn't it? Oh, yes. <coughs> I forgot about Mr. Switch. Let's lube up Mr. Switch. WD-40. Spray it over there a bit. Let's lube up Mr. Switch. I haven't got any switch cleaner. I've run out of switch cleaner. I need to buy some more. I'll probably buy some more in about eight years' time. But for now... We'll use WD-40 uh, and a pair of pliers. I might have to replace this switch. I think I've got some switches left. There it goes. Just because it's unstuck now doesn't mean it's necessarily going to work. The contacts might be no good. The contacts might have snapped off. You just don't know. If it's this rusty, the chances of the contacts being any good are quite slim. Oop. Oop. Anyway, we'll worry about that in a minute. I'll take that off. Two of them out. Now that can go. See you later. Bloody hell, look at that. It's all coming to bits. It's all broken. Want that? Don't want that. Right. Nice. So what have we got in the way of switches? What have we got in the way of switches? I need a switch that I don't mind going, letting go, because I'm going to sell this once it's done. So I want a switch that I don't mind letting go. I think that might be one I don't mind letting go. Look at that. On and off. What more could you want from a switch? Absolutely nothing. Providing that'll fit on there. That might fit. Hopefully it does. All right. Screwage. Oh dear. Oh dear, you mean. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Might have to get the drill out. Might have to get the old drill out and. Uh, Drill the heads off of those screws, right? Back in a minute, can go and get a drill. Oh dear me, right? That should do the trick. Nice little one now. Don't know if you can even see, can you? Probably doing all this and you can't see it. It's difficult because of the angles, you know. It's hard for me to go that way around. There we go. <coughs> right. 
bastard. I mean, you're only a switch. I mean, I'll get you. I'll get you. Get out of there. Get out of there, will you? There we go. We're out. We're out and loving life. There you go. There's the old switch. All that's drilled off heads in the bin. See you later. Don't come back. Right. Now, we can. Have I got any kitchen paper? No, I haven't. What I have got is a tissue. Right. Give that a bit of a wipe. Give that a bit of a wipe. When this is uh, all together and it's running properly, and I know that I haven't got to mess around with it or. Maybe I'm wasting my time, I don't know yet. Um, I'll give all the frame and everything a proper clean. Put a load of uh, engine cleaner all over it all and it'll all give it a proper and it'll come up really nice and shiny and be really nice and we'll all have a good time. But for now, I'll we'll just take that off of there. I'm doing this this morning because uh, I've got a little bit I want to do out there on the driveway but I'm waiting for my neighbour to go get up and go to work because uh, every time if I'm out there and he's out there he'll moan at me for something I don't like it when people moan you know I don't like confrontation really I always end up just agreeing he's like oh this this and that and uh, you are disgusting and all this stuff he called me disgusting <laughs> and uh, I end up just agreeing and then later on, like, Mrs. Lovey got me, why did you agree to that and all this? And I'm just like, well, so if I can avoid him, I will. So I'm just waiting for the guys. So I thought I'd come and do this. So, you know, it's ran the wrong way. I've got to, got to remember what way around I put it. Because you got to remember, because that's off and that's on. But if you put that on and you put the plate around the wrong way, you put the off on the on, you'll be switching it off and it'll be on. You'll be switching. So you've got to make sure you put it around the same way as what it says on both. It's probably out of focus anyway. So I'll make sure we do that. And I'm going to put off facing the wheel. That's going to be off. So... around there like that there we go <clears throat> off is facing this way where's the screwdriver there it is <coughs> <coughs> oh dear come on you can do it come on come on That's it, you've got it well done, yes. That's a nice switch. Do that one up. Do that one up. There we go. Nice new switch. Off, on, off, on, off. On. Happy days, couldn't be better, and I really need to sneeze. All right, that's that out of the way. Here's the transmitter, by the way, for the um, fly sky thing. It's got not many batteries, and I've got to find some batteries. <coughs> <coughs> right, <coughs> one transmitter. Uh, that's for the battery, that can go there. This is the electric side. Negative there. No, I can't remember. What was that one? I think that one's a throttle. So the throttle can go there. And the steering can go there. Right. Now, the back tray. 
This is a good battery, this one. Oh, I think it is. Isn't it? Where's the wire gone? There it is. God, we're getting up in a bit of a pickle here, aren't we? Jesus Christ, man. Calm down. Stop it. How many times have I told you just to be calm? Stop pickling. Alright? Good. It's nice to see that someone's listening. Put that on there like that. Yes. Oh, no, wrong way around. That's it. Ha <laughs> ha! On, off. On, off. On, off. On, off. And it goes to fail safe, it goes to brakes. Good. Let's find batteries for the transmitter. And away we go. Oh, this is handy. This is the little tub thing that come with that uh, Hyper 7 that I got off of that mate of mine that I've known ever since I was in school. And um, it, when I got that Hyper 7 off it, it gave me this. And it's got receivers in it, it's got high up bayo, it's got spectrum receivers and bits and bobs in it. I've got no spectrum controllers, so I can't use that. Um, but it also had batteries in it, look. Loads of batteries. So let's take them all out. And hopefully they've got some electric in them still. And if they've got electric in them, we'll be able to use them. What more can you ask for, you know? You, everything's just on a plate. You know, that's the beauty of just being alive, you know? Everything just on a plate, right in front of you. All you got to do is go and get it. You want to be a doctor? Go and be a doctor. Put that battery in. I'll put that one in first, you idiot. You want to be an airline pilot? Go and be an airline pilot. You know, just got to go and get it. Oh my giddy arm! This is a disaster. This is a, this isn't a circus, by the way. This is a this is a, a video on on YouTube. In case you thought you was watching a circus. Oh my giddy aunt, right, I've had enough. Right, let's stop clowning around. Let's stop clowning around, I said, and let's let's actually make some progress. Right, here we go, moment of truth. Oh yes, we have electric. MTA4, I think that's what they come out of, so that should be the right one. Right, have we got steering? Well, the servo works, but it looks like the servo saver is still seized up, so we've got to fix that. Throttle. Yep. Brakes. Kind of. We can always mend the brakes. There's no problem. Not really sure what that's all about. Let's see. Let's adjust the end stops. Okay, that's wrong. Just gonna adjust the end stops, I won't bore you. Right, where that was so rusty on that little linkage there, it wasn't letting us do the brakes. But now, I still gotta adjust the brakes. I think they're probably seized up. I'll put a little bit of stuff on them as well. Well, not on the brakes themselves, on the linkage. bit of stuff on there. Hopefully that'll eat through that. Um, but now we can the servos are working well, we can do brakes. Just need to unseize the little caliper. I might have to put a bit of heat on it, but I don't want to melt the brake disc itself, but we'll have a look at that. That might even be why the diff's not working. It might be because the brake's stuck on. <coughs> it might be stuck on. We might be able to sort of pry that apart. And we might get movage. If 
I can get a power plant. I might have to take this top plate off here. If I take this plate off, I might be able to get to it. Zoom out a little bit. Uh, let's have a look. Let's take this off. The worst thing is when you take the screw out and then you find out it's got a nut on the bottom of it and you can't get to the nut on the bottom of it without taking something else off and that's a pain in the bum that is when they do that I hate it when they do that but you just want to go to the designers and give them a slap around the face with a wet fish and go what are you doing you're supposed to be good professional designers and what you've done you've made an abomination difficult to work on Right. If we take off this plate, we're about to get in there and we'll be able to see exactly what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I should be able to see what is going on. It's very, very good. I know, I know, I know. Stop telling me. I know all about it. Get this off. So far, we've got good, good progress. Engine's fine, servos are fine. There goes that piece of plate. Right, now we can see in there, <coughs> driver of the screws. Oh yeah, that's rusted solid, that's why. Absolutely rusted solid. And this brake disc. It's solid, even though the brake disc itself is plastic. It's solid. Right. Great big fat screwdriver here. Jam that in there and try and pry that apart. Probably break it in the process. But that's alright. Well, it's not alright, we don't want to break it. I just want to try and Bring it a bit so that it will work. Right, let me get my little flame, my little blowtorch has run out of gas, and I haven't got any gas. I need to go and buy some gas. All these things I need to buy, but I can't, and it's really annoying. Uh, let's see, if this one's got some gas in it. It's not really going to help because I need a blowtorch, really, to be able to blow the flame in there. Um, but I might be able to. Nah, it's not enough. I need a blowtorch. This little one's handy because it's a blowtorch. You do that, and it. Out there like that it's a very good one that one and you can just oh I've got an idea <coughs> I've got an idea back in a minute this soldering iron very good kit this one this soldering iron I've got here it comes with a blade I don't know what that is a thing and another thing oh that's a soldering tip and uh, a little shroud for blow torching on your um, what's it so it's also got a little blow torch end that come with it very very handy I, thought, I don't use it enough really it's a very good little soldering iron i've had it probably well i've had it definitely about 15 years because i was a kid when i got it no i lie that says 2013 on there so i've, I've had it 11 years then well happy days 11 years i've had that very very good oh bloody hell it's hot as well all right let's put that on there look heat that up a little bit we might be able to get it to free up I just don't want to melt any of the plastic that's what I'm trying not to do is melt the plastic but what I do want to do is get the metal that's rusted to suck in that PB blaster wherever it's gone let's get some more we want it to suck it in because what will happen is if you squirt it on there 
and then you heat it up or you heat it up and then screw it on heating it up and then screwing it on is better the heat will suck it in to the little crevices where it's rusted and it will cut and it will work loose so that's what you want to do you might need to spray it on it we might get it on the disc we've already got it on the calipers so what we'll have to do is we'll have to clean it all with brake cleaner afterwards otherwise it won't work because it'll all be oily <coughs> So we just keep heating these little screws up. The other option I've got is to take it all apart. And I don't fancy taking it apart at the moment. You know me. If I can get away with not taking something apart, I will do. So we'll see how this goes. Right. I had to take it apart. Uh, I actually... Oh, that was loose. I actually hate taking stuff apart. Hate it. Hate taking stuff apart. Um, it's one of those things that you do because you got to. You know, you got something that doesn't work, and you want it to work. So what have you got to do? You've got to take it apart. You know, and I hate taking stuff apart. It's a bloody pain in the ass, but it's got to be done. So I've had to take this apart. And it's a uh, rusted solid. Work. Work. No, hasn't, hasn't, uh, hasn't worked. So let's see. If I can go that way. There we go. Let's loosen that up. So we know it's not the diff, it's just the brakes that are stuck on. I wonder if I can get those screws if I take that off. Where's the, the set screw in there somewhere? I'd rather not, I'd rather just leave it alone because it'll mess all the gears up and all the other rubbish. All the stuff that I'm just simply not interested in, in the slightest. Just, I just don't care about it, I'm afraid. So, right, I'm going to fanny around with this, get this to be a lot freer than it is, and then we'll come back and stick it back on the car. Right, I thought I'd better show you what I'm doing. I've got a pair of mole grips on the uh, little shaft. And I'm just working it backwards and forwards there, look. Got plenty of penetrating fluid on there. That's freeing that up. I don't want to move a lot, it only moves a little bit. And then we can move our brakes around. That's the gears, by the way. They're all right. That's the brake disc, that plastic disc. That's the calipers there. This is the little shaft which is attached. And uh, that's what puts your brakes on and off. And that is about the neutral position there. So that should be loose. But it's not at the moment. It will be. Don't worry about that. I'll soon sort that out. The trouble is the brakes are never going to work with all this oil all over the calipers and the um, disc. And the disc itself and the calipers, they probably soaked up some of the oil now. But I will clean them off with brake cleaner as best I can. And we'll try and get it to work. As the best I can get it to work. Alright, I'm going to do my best to try and get that to focus. In on there. Now you might be able to see in, for God's sake, <coughs> in there, you might be able to see like a little lobe. All right, watch it. This is the best I can do, I'm afraid. When I turn that, can you see it? The little lobe turns sideways and it pushes on this caliper pad here, plate, whatever you want to call it, pushes against and it squashes the disc. That's how brakes work. I don't think it's very clear though, is it? One day when I'm a millionaire, I'll have a proper studio with proper lighting and you'll be able to see. But for now, we'll make do with this. Right, that's that done. That's nice and free now. That goes around. It was still a little bit stiff, but when it's on the car, I'm sure that will 
that'll wear away and never work over again. So perfect, it's exactly how we like that. Get that off of that. What bloody is that? Alright. Nice. I'm going to leave that as is. I'm not going to bother anything with that. That grub screw was loose though. <coughs> oh my get here. Right, now I've lost where I was. Where was I? Yes, that's right. That goes on there. That goes on there like that. That's a bearing. And that goes that way round. And that goes that way round. Like that. Right, let's put it back on. Right, just doing the last screws up. Four screws holding the diff in. Those last four up. Happy days. And then hopefully, with any luck. Well, I already know the front diff's free. I mean, obviously, I'm not stupid. I span that when I had it apart just before I put it together, and the, the front diff is all right. So I know that's not going to be a problem. At least it shouldn't be a problem. It's not a problem. I just rolled it along the floor. It's just very stiff because the brakes are still a bit stiff. But we'll fix that. That is fine. We're not worried about that. That will all wear in as we're driving round. Now we need to sort out this servo saver. It's a bit stiff. Don't really want to be taking it apart. I can't be bothered to take it apart. Can I be bothered to take it apart? No, I definitely can't be bothered to take it apart. <coughs> right. Where does oh we've got bolt of brake linkages in that one. But um we'll worry about that in a little while. Where does that go? Does that go on there? I'm not sure whether that goes on there or I think it must do. It must go on there. Like that. And then that goes on there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that, that went like that, didn't it? And that went underneath. Like that. Right, okay. Pull all these screws back in. And then we'll be back to where we were. Right, so that's all done. Now I forgot to put the um, brake little linkage back on and I put the uh, diff back in so I'm just putting that on there took apart the took the servo because I couldn't bother to take the diff out again I just put it all back on so I'm just taking the servo on and off um, poking it through the little thing like that put the little thing on the end of it where's the do it up in a random place for now it's just a random one don't know it doesn't matter where it is because i don't know where it needs to be yet um stick the servo horn back on the way it came off where's it gone there it is. Well, i've just had a look as well i know what the problem is with the steering so i need to get the super glue out because um the little post the steering post has snapped um, so it doesn't need to glue that together and then that'll be good <coughs> right let's button this up um let's button all these ones actually we don't know oh no we have we've got all that in the right place that's all together so that can go around now i don't know why they don't make oh they have they made or someone's cut that out uh, it's not a proper cut out someone's cut it out but it'll be all right I suppose I could. I could make that go around the proper route if I really wanted to. That's going to be a bit of a pain in the arse, mind you, but I can do it. I think it needs to go down there and there. Will it go through there? No, that gap's too small. But I might be able to poke it backwards. It'd be handy if I could get it to go through there because then it won't be running around the front and getting in the way of things. So I'll try and 
force it through there if I can without breaking it and then we'll have a look everybody knows manufacturers don't like to make it easy when it comes to wiring doesn't matter whether you've got electric or whether you've got uh, nitro they don't make it easy because well let's be honest they're in a nice cozy office unit and the people who uh, put these together are in a nice cozy factory um you know so they, they they just make things and they think oh well this is lovely this is this works very very well in our environment yeah we won't think about the uh, average joe the average customer which probably won't have a nice cozy uh, factory or a nice cozy office um they'll be in a cold wet damp garage somewhere um just trying to do this but that'll be fine that'll be absolutely fine see what i've done is i've accidentally wrapped it around the drive shaft so i've got to try and get it past the drive shaft and then bring it up bring it up like a that but in get up and like a that okay okay i will i will no problem no problem i'll get there i'll get there just bear with me will you just be patient right so what i've done is i've put the switch wire instead of it just going up in there because it would have got pinched and then if it goes around the front there it's just another wire around the front i didn't want so i ran it along the back along there you probably can't see it goes along the back and then it goes around this corner here and here it is there and now there's a little cut out that somebody's done on there and that corresponds to that so now that will just go straight up in there and it won't get pinched or anything like that and all the servo wires take the same route as well so that's very 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 handy uh, i can't express my handiness of how handy that is so let's that can go that way around we'll just stuff that in there like that see this receiver is quite a bit smaller than the receiver that was originally in it because obviously 2.4 gig servos uh, uh servos receivers are just smaller than the uh, 27 megs or 40 megs ones that's the way the cookie crumbles when it comes to those so let's put that little aerial through there happy days oh man i couldn't be happy with that that's a brilliant place absolutely brilliant. oh you cock it goes that way all right well it's still enough it's still enough we don't need to worry about it right okay where are them screws that's it we'll put these screws in then all we need to do is put the battery on it. Oh, I've got to glue. I've got to glue that um, that steering. So we need to put a bit of brake cleaner on it. Clean off all the oil that I put on it, trying to free, free the spring up because it's got a servo saver on it as well. It's got a little spring, and um, that was ever so slightly rusty. So I put a load of oil on it and penetrating fluid, trying to free that up a bit, and it worked. But I noticed as well that someone, because when I got this, these steering arms here, the linkages, they were popped off. And I reckon someone had tried to have a look at the steering and probably give up. Or maybe they snapped it and thought, oh, I've snapped it now, I've had enough. Um, so that's what that's all about. So I'm just going to stick a bit of super glue on it, glue it together. If it works, happy days. If it doesn't work, I don't care. I move on with life. You know what I mean? It's not nothing, anything that's worth worrying about. It's just a bloody steering arm. I mean, yeah, so we'll get a bit of glue out. Let's just, um, where's the battery gone? There it is. Let's attach the battery. I'm gonna have to cable tie that battery on there somewhere like that. Cable tie that other wire out of the way for now. Oh my god. That's it. <laughs> Put 
put that around the wrong way, you idiot. I'll, I'll fix that in a minute. Don't worry about that. <coughs> I put the bloody bit of plastic pipe on the wrong end. Tit. Anyway, let's have a look at this. Yeah. I don't know if it's meant to be like that, you know. I thought it was snapped, but maybe it's not. They move all right now. Good little servo, that one, isn't it? Yeah, look, they're loosening up. Can you see them moving more? They're getting better. They'll get better with time. Oil and time, they'll get better. I might loosen the screw a little bit. There's a screw under here. It's, uh, I should be able to loosen them so slightly. Right, I should be able to. <sighs> if it wasn't rusted completely, I might be able to loosen this top one a little bit. Oh. If I someone already loosen that. Well, there we go. Not perfect. Still needs a little bit of work here and there. But it runs. Servos work. It will move. I put it on the floor just then. Don't know whether I'm going to cut that out or not. But I put it, I put it on the floor. It drove along. The brakes are a little bit stiff still. The mechanism, the little arm, with the little cam that knocks the pads is a little bit stiff. I just drip a lot. I just drip some oil on it now and again. I'll just drip a little bit more on it there. There you go, a little bit of oil just dribbled on there. And a little bit just dribbled down in there. That'll work its way loose. With the use, the steering, it's getting there. It's not perfect. Um, it is loosening up. I thought it was broken, but I don't think it is. I, part, I think that's part of the servo saver. And it's not actually broken. Um, so... I'm not going to glue that, but it does move, look they do move, so I'm just going to keep on dribbling oil all over that servo, that little spring, I can't get the screw out, I'm not going to bother with it, but it's a fully working 
truck at the moment. <clears throat> the next time that we'll see it is when we take it for a test drive and we'll see what it's going to do. What is it capable of? Who knows? I can get that body shell on there. There we go. Thunder Tiger SSK, a very iconic monster truck from back in the day. I remember I had a mate who had one of these. Actually, it's the same mate who I got that Hyper 7 from. Um, I've known him ever since we were very young nippers. And um, he had one of these. I'm sure it was one of these. And I had the Savage 21. This exact Savage 21 back in 2004. And he got one of those SSKs. And we used to blast around the swimming pool car park and other places, you know. He'd be going, Nyo! and I'd be going, Nyo! and yeah, great fun. These Thunder Tiger SSKs would definitely, they bring back a lot of good memories for me. Not because I had one, but because friends that I knew had, uh, they had them. And uh, we just had some good times. It needs new tyres and that, but we'll worry about that kind of stuff later on. So the next time you see this, we'll be out and about giving it a test drive, because at the moment, as far as I can tell, it's fully test drive worthy. So there we go. Uh, at the mo so far, this hasn't been that bad. Um, Mr. T and B put in his little note, as we saw in the beginning of the other video when I got the engine running. This is supposed to be the most difficult restoration I've ever done, and I've. I was when I saw that air filter and all the rust I thought maybe that's right but it actually turned out to be a very good one so far the engine come straight to life the servos worked um, which is good because if you remember I had an RS4 that had seized up servos so I put the only spare servos that I had on that RS4 and I've now sold that so I haven't got any spare servos so I'm glad these servos did work because I didn't have any spares and so far it's a driving truck so happy days if you like this sort of thing stick around plenty of this sort of thing this is what i do mainly is get old nitro cars up and running again but i do mess around with other things now and again and we go out and about down the parks and whatever now and again but mainly we mess around with these old cars because not a lot of people got a lot of patience for nitro so they just they either they won't start for them or whatever they stick them on ebay get rid of them and i get them and we get them going and see what they're like. It's all fun and games, you lot. It's all fun and games. You've got to keep yourself busy these days. You've got to keep yourself busy. Keep yourself away from all the poison in the world and keep yourself busy doing something nice and innocent. Anyway, thanks for watching. Treat people nice. Treat people how you want to be treated. Don't be a cock and just we all should have a nice, happy life then. Cheerio, you lot. All the best.